So for the past several months, each week Daybreak has brought you information before the bell to help parents, students, and teachers get ready for their day. And this morning, school districts across North Texas are offering in-person learning. But as COVID-19 cases continue to climb in the state, officials have been turning their attention back to the schools. State leaders hoping that some new rapid COVID tests will help bring spiking coronavirus numbers down. Cleo Green joins us live from a newsroom with more. Keeping our fingers crossed for this, Cleo. Yes, you know, Mark, as COVID cases spike schools, they have a new weapon to fight back. School leaders at Dallas ISD say they're getting 15,000 rapid antigen tests from the TEA, and they could begin testing by next Monday. So we're learning the tests are a fraction of the cost of standard swab PCR tests, and they're easy to use, and they give results in about 15 minutes. We believe it's going to help better inform and really allow for an even more safer environment. This will really, to your point, really be a game changer for us because we absolutely will be able to identify um, a greater population if that exists. So on a bigger scale here, federal officials say they're sending Texas more than 8.7 million rapid tests. 64,000 have made it to school districts, a school district in El Paso. They already used about 1,000 tests with 20 positives, stopping possible classroom outbreaks. Now back to Dallas ISD because they said they're going to start testing athletes with trainers because those students have the most close physical interaction. This plan is to test once a week before practices and eventually include other students and staff. So Fort Worth and Arlington ISD say they're waiting on guidance from the TEA before deciding whether to apply. Frisco ISD officials decided not to ask for those tests. They think there's already adequate testing in the community. Kara, I'll send it back to you. All right, thanks for the update. So parents and caregivers, the FBI have a warning for you. The agency tweeted this message recently to alert the public. Child abductors could potentially use social media to lure victims and added kids are at a greater risk for encountering offenders because of virtual learning and an increased use in social media. Now, the FBI also shared these stats collected by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. The organization has experienced a 63% increase in cyber tip line reports between January and September versus the same time period in 2019. I reached out to Dallas Children's Advocacy Center to see what parents, caregivers, and teachers can do to mitigate the risk. Here's Brittany McGowan. As children, as young as they're able to understand, start talking to them about what's appropriate for internet um, net equip. So what information should they be sending? What information should always um, be kept within the family? Definitely asking those direct questions of saying they're in a school uh, setting and making sure that only the children were allowed in that classroom and the teacher. If there were any unknown people um, engaging on those virtual platforms that they don't know, to let their parents know. But definitely asking those direct questions um, for our kids so we can get those answers and navigate from there and resolving that issue. So McGowan added to keep conversations judgment free so your kids feel more comfortable coming to you if any appropriate content is sent to them. She said to make sure pop up blockers are on to prevent material being sent while they are online learning and tell them not to give people your Wi Fi password. In addition to monitoring your child's devices, play with the apps yourself before allowing them on your child's phone. Net Smarts Kids, that's Net Smarts with a Z, is a great tool for kids and conversation starters for parents. McGowan also conducts online safety training courses. You can visit DCAC.org for more details.